Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Legend of Dragoon. Now, before you decide to go forward, eh, if you want to turn around, I would suggest doing it now because... Sequence time. Storytelling. That's a good thing. Obvious. Hmm, wonder where they are. Yeah, I don't think they're all going to hide in the same spot. Ashel, what's up? Considering you punched through a massive stone coin or whatever the hell that thing was, that doesn't surprise me. Well, it looks like Hashel needs a little rest. <laughs> Meru's funny. Oh, that's nice of you, Meru. When would they come back? Hmm. So, we're all heading in here in order to uh, get the bandits, I guess? Why would they all be in one location? How would that be an effective way to lay a trap? Be good. Ashel, what are you doing? And we have a traitor in our midst. The way he runs, it's almost like a traitor. And he cheats. He can actually run up those stairs. I can't run up those stairs. The game does not like me running up stairs for some reason. I seem to walk up them all the time. Yeah, so basically, they went all the way through that, I'm assuming, long cavern in order to find out there were rock fireflies in there. And no bandits. Yeah. As you can tell, this is kind of important to Hashel. I'm just going to leave Meru in for now. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Pick up the treasure chest. Angel's Prayer. Not bad. Uh, does this say anything? Rock shaped like a face. Well, that's helpful, I guess. And one more battle, and then we'll talk to the rock fireflies. So I was wrong in the, uh, in the last episode there. There are... Uh, more of those bandits, and you can run into them in this screen. I think I put a little note in the video there. Annotation or whatever it is. Yeah, this whole thing is just a tiny little area. I, I don't know why they had to go all the way in there, considering you can only go in slightly more than your own, uh, you know, your own body width into the little cavern there. Um, one thing to note is even though Hashel is left, you can actually leave the area and go back. And that leads me to another point. Remembering to turn on my timer. And as well, I went back and I picked up a couple of attack items because I hadn't thought that they were going to be all that useful here. But it turns out they will be quite useful. Um, I already had one translate from disc one. So I bought two more in Flets and I bought a Rave Twister in... Uh, the Flower City. So yeah, that's pretty much all I got right now. Don't need... Everything else is just kind of standard for what I'm usually having here. Um, yeah, that should be fine. I'm not going to bother to uh, do too much in terms of setup. Uh, I'm pretty well already set up the way I want to it would be anyway. What's going on here? Oh, balls. Um, wait a minute, we beat him pretty easily last time. Never mind, I'm not worried. And that laugh is extremely annoying. Uh, yeah, very much so. Oh, so apparently he has shown up here and they weren't too happy with him. That woman? Huh? Which woman? A woman is in control of the palace. Game! Talk about spelling it out for everyone. Could at least have some subtlety. If, uh... If you haven't figured out what's going on, I'll, I won't spoil it yet. Even though, like, pretty much 
tell you at this point, but eh, we'll wait a little while longer. Apparently, Garrick doesn't want to uh, doesn't want to kill anybody. It's kind of weird. And of course, Hashel. Mappy, you pretty much are small fry, aren't you? And yes! Hasha was right, this is the same uh, student uh, disciple of his that uh, was kicked out years ago. Freedom. Not the same person. Martial arts is your heart. Oddly enough, that's kind of an important line. Hmm. It's an interesting way of looking at it. I guess it's kind of the same idea as, you know, pro being a proponent for martial arts as self-defense only, never as offense. Look at that, it's a Karate Kid message all over again. I'll shut you up. And, of course, dart to the rescue. No, I, I was bullshitting before. There's, Hashel's not a spy. He just wanted to face his own problem by himself. <laughs> yeah. So, as was kind of obvious, uh, although I tried not mentioning it, yeah, Hashel is forced into our party for this fight. That's why I didn't bother having to equip Meru or anyone else. I'm still set up the way I was before with the uh, therapy ring and the physical ring and I think Dart is using the power wrist. No, I think he's still got the talisman. Uh, Mappy is going to be part of this fight. He can inflict instant death. Though he's not going to have very much of an opportunity to do so. And you'll see why eventually. Fast forward through long animations. And it's boss time. Now, as you can see, Garrick is um, Earth Elemental and Mappy is Darkness Elemental. Mappy will not last long. And the reason why he won't last very long is because we have attack items. And he is extremely weak to magic, which I actually didn't know ahead of time, and I forgot to uh, make sure my hand was going to work for doing additions, or whatever this is. Let's see here. Hey, you can actually do it today. Yeah, 471 damage. A normal attack against this guy is going to do about 120, same as Garrick. And since Dart has a pretty high magic stat as well, I'm going to have him... Uh, Go to it as well. Ah, that sucked. Yeah, not quite as good, but still, Dart using uh, an attack item and being able to do nearly as much as Rose, that is an awesome thing. Now, there are a number of things to note about this boss fight. Um, one, is each of these guys drops a unique item. So, and it's a 25% chance, and I can't remember which one actually, uh, which one drops it. I'm gonna give this guy one hit, and then I'm going to use the, uh, the Rave Twister there, which is a wind attack for all. Should be enough to take out Mappy and do some pretty good damage to uh, Garrick as well. Uh, yeah, the other interesting thing to note about this fight is these two can do a dual tech in kind of the light of Chrono Trigger. And of course that only works well he's alive. Unfortunately I wasn't able to kill him. But yeah, their dual tech is actually rather effective. So I wouldn't... Uh, yeah. And basically what happens is it's the same as in the previous fight. He'll disappear. And if he disappears... Um, you know, he'll reappear in three turns, and he'll be able to do quite a bit of damage. Now, 
Garrick himself is also pretty weak to magic, so that's another option is if you want to use uh, Dragoons, that would be quite effective if it didn't cause the game to freeze up. Which, oddly enough, doesn't seem to happen every time. He may not be uh, Darkness Elemental, but he still takes a pretty good damage from that. And now you can kind of see why I went with attack items to start off the fight. Because it really quickens the, uh, the pace of the fight, and it does a lot more damage than our normal attacks do. But you only have so much room in this game for items, which is kind of unfortunate, but oh well. I can't remember what other kinds of attacks he has. Most of them are physically based. He doesn't have a lot of magical attacks, if any. But yeah, so he probably won't stay around too long. He's got a kind of a variant style. Some of his attacks seem to be based on his fist. Others seem to be based on the dagger. Either way, he's not particularly challenging if you take him down quickly. He can counter, obviously. Not all bosses can. I believe the Virage we faced uh, last time or the time before, uh, he uh, won't. He won't counter at all, I don't think. So yeah, let's just keep wailing on the guy. I could use the speed up item that I picked up in the Valley of Corrupted Gravity, but it really is not particularly useful in this fight. He's not doing a lot of damage that I could, you know... I don't have one character that's doing enough damage that a speed up would help finish him off much faster. And as you can see, he does a, a fair amount of damage, but considering we, you know, took down Matthew real quick, which is the real threat, and he also has less life, you know, it, it, it definitely helps out a lot. Ow! That hurt. Eh, I think he'll guard. Yeah, the, uh, as if you kind of noticed, the, uh, the therapy ring on Hashel is extremely abusive in boss fights. He has max life and no one else does. Now, I didn't write down the two items that these guys drop. I believe one is a diamond claw, which is a new weapon for Hashel, and the other is a soul headband, which is also uh, for Hashel, but I believe it's a uh, piece of headgear, obviously. And so, yeah, um... Each of them drops uh, one item with a 25% probability. Each of them is a good upgrade. And as long as you're able to get one, I would uh, call that a victory. Though I'm going to try and get myself two. I won't try very many times, but... I think I'll definitely try. I usually try, and I'm usually only able to get one, but as long as you get at least one of them, you're pretty lucky. Hmm? What's going on? Load-bearing boss fight? How come the statue is breaking because we fought the boss? And here we're... What? Why don't you move? You had plenty of time to move. Congo. What the hell? Damn. That's some freaky strength. And those are creepy eyes. And I got none of the, uh, that's great, none of the items. So I will be right back, hopefully with both of them. If not, I'll be back with one of them. All right, I'm back. Um, I have a feeling that you can't get both of them for some reason or another. Usually when you kill one of them and the only actions you change, I'm talking about emulators here, um, you know, if you kill one and you know that they're going to drop something, Normally, killing the other one doesn't have any effect, but in this battle, it seemed to. So, I wasn't able to get two items. Uh, the Soul Headband is dropped by Garrick. Um, it's a headgear for Hashel. Um, 
I would prefer that one over the Diamond Claw, which is a new weapon for him. The weapon Hashel has now has the ability to stun enemies, which is worth the, the drop in attack power that, you know, it is compared to the Diamond Claw, this current weapon that is. And we get some levels up, and Hashel gets Dragoon level 3. And he learns Thunder God. He also learns Summon 4 Gods, a new addition, which is very, very nice. Not a big fan of Summon 4 Gods. I hate actually having to do it, but... Yeah. So, what's up, Kongle? Why did you save us? Well, I guess we did kind of kill your boss. Well, yeah, they call it the home of the Gigantos. It would be logical that, you know, this would be his home. Why were the bandits scooped up here? Probably because there was no one left here. Which is pretty obvious. Yeah. Well, what is your treasure? And this is very true. Now, this is an interesting point. What he's saying is that Dole actually saved him and fought against bad people, which is not a great amount of explanation. Huh? It seems like Emperor Dole was, at least at some point, a very good person. Even after he had... well, no, oh, I won't say anymore. World needs a strong leader. Now, this is rather interesting. Rose, you're a bit of a cynic, even more so than me sometimes. <laughs> you don't make a good leader, which in RPG terms means you make a good leader. Squall didn't think he was a good leader. Well, never mind. We'll, we'll not talk about Squall. Cloud, um, Cecil. I don't think Cecil ever said that he wasn't going to make a good leader, but... Well, actually, it seems to be half and half, because I just thought about Titus. <laughs> okay, it's a 50-50 it's a split. But it does happen a lot. That, you know, there's a character specifically the main character, who doesn't think he makes a good leader and, in turn, makes a good leader. The strong, silent leader doesn't always work particularly well, but in some cases it does. And, of course, because it's Meru, she's using the word attracted in two different ways. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. And here we are having a nice long conversation Well, Hashel's over there with his dying uh, pupil. We're not really doing anything to help him, eh? Friend? Yeah, well, getting back to the point I was starting to bring up earlier. Kongle is an interesting breed. You don't tend to see the big, strong, silent type also be intelligent. You know, a lot of the time you see a big, strong character and he's dumb as a doornail. Or door something. I can't remember the damn phrase, whatever. Anyway, we have to find Lin and the Dragoon Spirit. Hmm? Now what? Apparently, uh, they mastered some kind of technology here. The Gigantos, not as stupid as you might think. 
which comes back to Gongle. He is rather an intelligent character, though, you know, only speaks a few words. It's a rather interesting dynamic that you don't see as often as, you know, you'd like. That's a strange line. <laughs> Talking makes you die. <laughs> the princess. She's a fake! Yeah, if you hadn't figured it out. Yeah, uh, the princess in the castle is actually a different person. Princess Lisa was right. And apparently the real one is still hidden in the castle. Not the best place to uh, hide someone who would, you know, cause a scandal if she was found out. Oh, well, that's nice of you. Though his body isn't really cold yet. Kind of makes me think of uh, a certain sequence on uh, the planet Namek in Dragon Ball Z. Hmm. And so, yeah, he's going to uh, lay his f former friend to uh, rest. And Kongol is going to stand guard. Now, very important, under the torch, Stardust. Number 30. Uh, this is, I think, one of two that we found so far that aren't in traditional towns. Uh, this technically isn't a town, though I guess at one point it would have been. And yeah, the uh, the fool is in prison, and Meru is not intelligent enough to look for a switch to open the door. Good thing Albert's here; otherwise, I don't think we'd ever accomplish anything. Um, in Meru's case. Not a good idea. I don't think she has very many brain cells. She reminds me of a very ditzy character in... Actually, she reminds me of Lena Inverse from Slayers. <laughs> in a lot of senses, she does. <laughs> That's a series I haven't watched in a long time. It's a lot of fun when I was younger. What great people. A lot of things to say. Okay. You might be able to talk if you hadn't changed. Now, you get a, a second kind of look at Garrick and see that, you know, he... Yeah. They're actually going to spell it out. I was going to go into detail, but there. Person who joined him half a year ago. Oh, yeah. So, how has... They've already mentioned that it's a woman, and it's pretty obvious that it's a woman, considering she's masquerading as Princess Emily, but how is it that she managed to look so closely like the real Princess Emily? Let's split up and look for it. Is it going to be really easy to find? Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah, I don't think anyone says anything particularly interesting. Because it recognizes you. And at least that actually makes sense. Your logic will not work. Well, not in trying to find a needle in a haystack, no. Talk to Shauna real quick. And, of course, here it is. A little shiny on the screen. Of course that's what it is. And we got it back. Nice. And you do notice how, you know, Mappy took hold of it, and it didn't recognize Mappy. Well, that's because he's not meant to have the Dragoon Stone, and as they've kind of uh, mentioned before, the Dragoon Stones have a little bit of a an idea, or, you know, kind of like a, a logic behind them when they choose who is it's going to resonate with, and who can use it. Mm -hmm. 
and yeah, so we've pretty much cleared out all we needed to do here. Nice. And with that, we get Kongol in our party. And he is as he was whenever we faced him before. High HP, high strength. Crap for magic defense. And something we actually haven't seen much of in terms of him yet. His speed is abysmal. He is nearly unusable. As he is. If you look at his speed, 30. Meru has 70. Meru is the fastest character in the game, but if you look, yeah, his is abysmal. You give him a bandit's ring and he can kind of keep pace, but if you look at his magic defense, you know, it's just as high as Albert's and Albert at least has enough speed. You know, his base speed is 40, but 40 and 30, there is a large difference between in this game. So anyway, yeah, Kongol is a difficult character to use. Um, but I will find enough uses for him throughout. Anyway, um, that's all the time I have for this episode. I went a little long, but we got through this sequence. Um, now I'm going to meet you guys. Well, there's a bunch of stuff we can do now. Uh, I'm going to meet you back at the Flower City next time, and we'll move on from there. Anyway, that's all for this episode, and I'll see you guys next time.